Hi there, this is part four of my book review video on Victor Wooten's The Music Lesson. It's a really hot day out here, but I've got my book and my ice cold pink lemonade, so it's all good. In today's video, I'd like to share uh, just five of my favorite paragraphs from the book and talk a little bit about each one and then I'll probably do one more video to close out this whole series. So thank you for coming along. I hope that my AC unit back there is not too loud, um, but I want it to be outside because it's a beautiful day. It's hot, but I'm in the shade and it's kind of a nice uh, time to be out. The first quote I'd like to share is actually, even before the chapters begin, and it's sort of a funny note, you know how you get one of those uh, things uh, before the preface of the book, and I'll let you read it for yourself. It, uh, it says this. So just in case you didn't, you weren't able to read that, it says, warning, everything in this book may be all wrong, but if so, it's all right. And what he means by that, what Victor means by that, um, I see two things in there. First, he, he doesn't pretend to have all the right answers. I'm guessing that's one of the things he means by that. And another thing he might mean by that is that music is a personal experience and uh, the person next to you could have a different experience than yours. Of course, he's not referring to music theory because music theory is the same for everybody. But the perception and the experience of music could be different for different people. So that's a pretty cool way to, um, to open his book. The second paragraph I'd like to share is found on page three. And I'll read, um, I'll read the, the whole thing. It's, uh, it's a little bit long, but I'll read it word for word. Here's what I mean. This is, um, this is Victor talking. Here's what I mean. I listened to music in the past but only in a one-sided way. I only listened to what I wanted to hear, not what music had to say. It was as if I only wanted to hear my own opinion. Have you ever had a conversation where you didn't really listen to what the other person had to say? Of course you have. We do it all the time. We're usually so anxious to say the next word or phrase that we don't fully listen to what anyone else is saying. We feel the need to get our point across, the need to win. That doesn't cultivate a good relationship. It won't work with music either. So here is talking about um, coming to the table, coming to music listening, if you wish, with a clean plate, with maybe no expectation whatsoever. You know, sometimes you listen to music and you kind of want to hear a specific thing, you want to hear a specific way of playing, and if that happens, you're happy with it. And if it doesn't happen, then you're kind of disappointed. And he's talking here about a relationship with music and music listening, where you come to the plate with basically no expectation, with, a, uh, with an objective attitude, where you, you take it as it is. I think you can see Charlie, <laughs> my, my mini poodle in the background there, peeking out. Um, so coming to the table with basically no expectation and just taking it in as you hear it. That's a pretty cool way to, um, to, experiment, to, to experience music. The next paragraph I want to uh, read from is on page 19. I'll make this as quick as I can. Page 19 and um, this is Michael talking and if you, if you follow the series you know that uh, there's two characters in the book, Victor who's the author and Michael who's this fictional visitor that comes to Victor's house. So here's the paragraph, page 19. I am a musician, he answered. This is about Michael. He placed his hand on his chest to emphasize his point before gesturing at me. You are just a bass player, he's referring to Victor here. That means you played the bass guitar. A true musician, like me, plays music and uses particular instruments as tools to do so. I know that music is inside me and not inside the instrument. 
This understanding allows me to use any instrument or no instrument at all to play my music. I am a true musician and one day you too shall be. I like this paragraph a lot because it refers to instruments as mere vehicles of communi for communication. You know, I play uh, more than one instrument. I like to think of myself not only as a guitarist or as a pianist, uh, but as a musician and using these different instruments to simply communicate the music that is, like he says, inside of me, not inside the piano. It's inside of me, not inside the guitar, and these instruments, you know, the guitar, the bass, the piano, whatever instrument you play is a mere vehicle, it's just an instrument through which you express the music that is actually inside of you. The, the instrument by itself will just sit there and do nothing. It requires a person to take the music inside of them and express it uh, through the instrument that they pick up. So this was a really good paragraph that I liked a lot. The next one, um, I think it's on page 33, yes, page 33, and uh, here he talks about the elements of music. Um, I think that my previous video was about the elements of music, I'll place a link here so you can take a look at that video if you want, and in that video I... Um, I talk about the 10 elements of music that Victor offers in his book. Here's this paragraph. The elements of music are the individual parts that make, as mu that, that make up music as a whole. Many musicians like yourself struggle because you're not familiar enough with all the elements. You rely mostly on one or two of them when you play. Doing that is a great recipe for frustration. Charlie just gave up and he went back inside. A musician like me, this is Michael talking now, who appropriately uses all the elements will be one of the greats even though he may not be aware of the fact that he's using them. Actually, it would be nearly impossible to become a great musician without using all of these elements. Um, so the basic idea here obviously is that a great musician, a complete musician, is one that uses all of the elements of music. You know, maybe a drummer is very familiar with rhythm and tempo because he or she plays mostly rhythms. Um, maybe a drummer won't think as much uh, of, of, about harmony, uh, but what, what, this, what this paragraph is saying here is that a complete musician will actually have to think of all the elements all the time. You know, a drummer should think about harmony because he or she, playing as part of a band, will have to listen to the guitarist, will have to listen to the keyboard, will have to listen to the, to the uh, voices that are harmonizing. So the basic idea here is that a complete musician will have to be thoroughly familiar with all the music elements and be engaged with all of them throughout the music uh, experience. I think I have one more, I mean, I have a sip of my ice cold pink lemonade, really good. I have one more paragraph, I'm trying to make this video not too long, uh, on page 48, uh, and this one I liked a lot because it's talking about mistakes. Um, I made a video not long ago, it was a music theory video on um, improvisation, I'll place the link here. And in that video, where I'm talking about improvisation, I actually mentioned uh, this idea from Victor Wooden's book, if you can take a look if you want. Here's the paragraph uh, on page 48. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is Michael talking to Victor. Mistakes, he told me, are just things we didn't mean to play. It doesn't mean they are wrong. Some of the best music I've ever played started out as a mistake. Mistakes usually throw us off because the note comes out before we think about it. We can't avoid making mistakes, but we can get comfortable with them, especially if we practice making them. 
I like this paragraph a lot. Now, of course, here he's not talking about written music. You know, when you play a piece by Bach or Mozart or Beethoven or Vivaldi or anything like that, he's not talking about playing a wrong note that's different from what's written in the score. He's talking about improvised music. So you have to keep that in mind. He's not talking about playing a Bach sonata, a Beethoven sonata, you know, a Beethoven piano sonata, and then you play a wrong note. And he's not saying that's okay. What he's saying is about when you improvise music, it's okay to play wrong notes. And in fact, he's saying, in fact, there's no wrong notes. There's no such, there's no such thing as a wrong note because you can take those wrong notes and use them as a springboard for discovering new musical ideas. And that video I just mentioned, uh, on improvisation in my music theory series I give you uh, some specific examples so take a look at it and maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about and what Victor and Michael are talking about here well those are my five uh, five favorite paragraphs uh, from the book uh, of course there's many 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 more I could basically read something from every page uh, because the page, because the book is that good but I don't want to make this video too long I encourage you to take a look at it. Again, it's called The Music Lesson by Victor Wooten. You can Google it, you can YouTube it, you can look for it on Amazon. The subtitle is A Spiritual Search for Growth Through Music. And I think I'll do one more video, um, like a closing video, conclusion video, um, to close up this whole series. Well, thank you for watching. I think I'll enjoy the rest of my pink lemonade while I read some more uh, out of the book. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.